morning everybody. Good morning. It's good to see you all here, fresh from my lovely holiday away. <laughs> and I'm, as usual, I'm raring to go now I'm back, so it's brilliant to see you. I'm going to pass you over to Bill, who will lead us in our worship this morning. So I like to show that we're on holiday, isn't it? That's right. <laughs> Uh, our first hymn is hymn number 101, and we admit, sorry, omit, not admit, omit verse 3. We worship you, we give you thanks, 
we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Lord's side, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the colleague for today. Almighty God, who looked upon the loneliness of the Blessed Virgin Mary and chose her to be the mother of your only Son, grant that we who are redeemed by his blood may share with her in the glory of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so let us prepare ourselves for the Word of God, and it comes to us in the reading of the Holy Scripture. First reading is from Zion chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Make the mind of this people dull, and stop their ears and shut their eyes, so that they may not look with their eyes and listen with their ears, and comprehend with their minds, and turn and be healed. Then I said, How long, O Lord? And he said, until cities lie waste without inhabitants, and houses without people, and the land is utterly desolate. Psalm 45 Hear, O daughter, consider and incline your ear. Forget your people and your father's house, and the king will desire your beauty. Since he is your lord, bow to him. The people of Tyre will seek your favour with gifts, and the richest of people with all kinds of wealth. The princess is decked in her chamber with gold woven robes. In many coloured robes she is led to the king behind her the virgins. Her companions follow. With joy and gladness they are led along as they enter the palace of the king. In the, pal in the place of ancestors you, O king, shall have sons. You will make them princes in all the earth. I will cause your name to be celebrated in all generations. Therefore the peoples will praise you forever and ever. The second reading is from Galatians chapter 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that they may, might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir, through God. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Listen to the Gospel of Christ according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favour on loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his, arm, is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him. From generation to generation, he has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich empty away. He has helped his servant Israel 
in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestor, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. So today we read in our Gospel about Mary, specifically her words or her prayer. We know these words from Luke 1 as the Magnificat. And as we celebrate the life of Mary, we were reminded of the significance of those words. Mary was carrying a miraculous baby inside her. Now I've got friends that were wonderfully able to become parents about five years ago as a result of groundbreaking IVF treatment. And they'd previously been told there was absolutely no way they'd ever have children. So to have a child was an absolute miracle for them. The pregnancy and the birth were caused, as usual, of great rejoicing. And yet the miracle of Jesus being conceived within Mary is not the same as my friends having their baby. Mary was pregnant because God had wrapped himself up in human flesh and God had chosen Mary to be his earthly mother. An unrepeatable miracle, I'm sure you'll think. Mary was carrying something which was to be the cause of great joy in people, but also great fear in others. And it didn't take long for her unborn baby to inspire joy and worship. If you had been visited by the angel, if you'd just been told you'd become pregnant with God's son, if you weren't sure how to explain that pregnancy to your partner, I wonder who you would have confided in. Well, the angel had already told Mary that her cousin Elizabeth was pregnant in an old age. And so Mary hurried off to see Elizabeth. And for three months, those cousins became, I think, like antenatal partners to one another. No doubt they talked about the nitty-gritty of pregnancy and childbirth, but it's their initial conversation and Mary's song of praise that I'd like us to focus on for a few minutes. And as we do so, I'd ask the question, is Mary's song your song also? In the Bible, Jesus is sometimes referred to as the Word, and we see this in John's Gospel more than anywhere, where it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. And John continues by saying that the Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. So Mary was literally carrying the Word of God inside her. And her cousin Elizabeth was filled with joy when she encountered God in this way. Elizabeth was in the presence of the unborn Jesus and two things had happened. Elizabeth's own unborn baby, who if you remember is John the Baptist, leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth herself was filled with God's Holy Spirit and she began to say things in a loud voice concerning Mary, concerning the blessed child that Mary would bear and concerning Mary's faith in God's promise. It seems to me that this is the prelude or prologue to Mary's song. It's her willingness to be an instrument in the hands of God. Mary's attitude throughout the whole of her pregnancy was, I am the Lord's servant. So it seems when you read the part about Elizabeth and Mary that Elizabeth wasn't very Anglican at all. She was more Pentecostal in the way that she praised God about things. Her attitude was, blessed is she who has believed that the Lord has said to her, will be accomplished. In Psalm 139 it says, when God formed you in your mother's womb, he knew everything about you and he knows all about you now. So God made us, he loves us and he has a perfect plan for us just as he had a perfect plan for Mary. We have the gift, though, of free will to decide whether or not to follow the plans that God has for us. But nevertheless, he still has that perfect plan. The only question is whether or not we are willing to use our free will to decide to follow God's plans and purpose for our life or our communities or even our world. Well, Mary was willing. After Elizabeth shouted the words of wonder and praise in the direction of Mary and the not yet born Jesus, it was then Mary's turn. 
and those words which Bill read today have become massively famous. The Latin expression for Mary's song, as mentioned before, is called the Magnificat, and it's quite likely that Mary passed on these words of praise and that they were used as a hymn or a song in the early church. We can be quite sure that Luke spent time with Mary as he put together his account of the birth, life and death and resurrection of Jesus. And these wonderful words of praise stayed with Mary throughout her entire life, through the wonder of the birth of her son, beyond the anguish of the crucifixion of Jesus and onto the life of the early church, where Mary was, remember, a, a member of the first worshipping community in Jerusalem. So Mary is indeed blessed among women. But as we know, God's blessing does not mean an easy life or free of stress or grief. The blessing of Jesus' mother included that cross. But Mary was willing to follow God's brilliant plans for her. Her trust in God led her to witness the death of a son, but also the resurrection of a son. The blessings of her faith in God took in the whole range of human emotions. The birth of Jesus signals God's intention for his world, and he asks every one of us to join with those intentions. God lifts up the humble and the lonely. He fills the hungry with good things and he asks us to do the same. Mary spoke and probably sang these words. Jesus lived them out in order to show us what God is really like and he wants us to follow in his footsteps. If a 14-year-old girl, excited and yet anxious about her future, can say those wonderful words of the Magnificat, then her words can call us to embrace the journey God has for every one of us, knowing that if we trust him, he will bless us. Amen.
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for all that you have done for us. For the life and the love that you bestow upon us. Lord, make us mindful of your gifts, that we may be content and grateful. Living our love and our lives to you all of our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you, one God forever. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have shown us the way of life. Help us to walk in your ways and to do your will. We pray for all who are dedicating their lives to you, for the newly baptised and the recently confirmed, for all who are seeking and inquiring about their faith. Guide all prayer groups and Bible studies. We pray for hymn writers, musicians and choirs. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Direct all who beautify our world by their talents. All who improve our world by their actions. We pray for artists, architects and planners for park keepers and gardeners, all haughty culturists. Bless all actors, singers and dancers, all entertainers. And this time as they are beginning to return to the stage after a prolonged period away, Lord, we ask for their, your blessing on them. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We give you thanks for the gifts you have given to us. We pray for a sharing of talents in our communities, for your blessing on all councillors and group leaders. Here we ask for your blessing on the newest two town councillors of Konski Town Council that were elected on Thursday. May you be with them and guide them through faith. Bless our homes and loved ones with your joy and peace. Lord, in your mercy. <coughs> Lord, bring light to all who live in darkness and hatred. We pray for the people of Plymouth as they come to terms with the terrible attack that happened earlier this week. And we especially pray for the families affected. We also pray for the people of Afghanistan at this time, as the Taliban again begin to show terror. We pray for all who are tempted to do criminal acts or lead others astray. Lord, we ask that you look after them and keep them from doing anything that should, they should not do. We pray for all who are in sickness or trouble. Remember all those named in our intercessions books and those known to us at this time. We pray for all who mourn, all who are sad. Lord, in your mercy, we rejoice with all who praise you in the glory of your kingdom. We sing your praises with angels and archangels and all the company of heaven. 
We pray for loved ones departed. Here we pray for anyone known to us at this time and those named in that intercession books. Lord, in your mercy. Dear our friend. Moment of silence. Let us offer up our own prayers to God at this time, our own thoughts and our own petitions to Him. Lord, you always know what is on our minds. We ask that you answer our prayers and keep us in your holy arms. Just as Mary held Jesus in hers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, God, we ask that you heal the world, fill empty hearts, feed the hungry, free lost souls, continue to fight coronavirus, and forge us towards peace. For Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Mm -hmm. Merciful Father, Accept the prayer for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And so we pray the prayer of humble access together. We pray, pray the Lord. We do not presume to come to this table, the Lord, trusting in our own righteousness. But in your manifold and great mercies, we are not worthy so much as to gather at the crumbs under your table. But you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may have the more glad in him and in us. Amen. So notices today are all on the pew sheets. There's a couple of things going on. Um, this week, the whole of this uh, church and of the institute will be taken over by Children and Messy Church. So I don't know what you decided about the Eucharist on Wednesday. We're not having the Eucharist on Wednesday. I hope we are. Are we having the Eucharist here? Yeah. And then will that be all right, John? Yeah, we're going to be in there on Wednesday. Oh, super. There you go. So we can continue to with you. We're in here now. Brilliant. I'm glad that got sorted out. <laughs> <laughs> so, Messy Church will be here 16th to the 20th. Um, speak to Janice or one of us if you want to have any children that you know book on. You have to bring an adult with you. Uh, but lunches are now provided for, which is fantastic news. And then just below that is a notice about on Saturday the 21st, we're going to hold a display of all the work that the children have done throughout the week at the Institute. And that will be from 10 till 2, and there'll be refreshments available as well, which I think is going to be lovely to see all the work that they've done. Now, there's another fundraiser that's come about, and the forms are at the back of church. There is a spring and summer bulb offer. So for those who like your gardens or your planting, you can actually now order bulbs. And once you've got them, the money mm -hmm. will give us a bit of money as well, won't it, Janice, yeah, for the churches? What, what's actually happened is we can... It's a company that... Nicola feels they should be read by, so of course they're cheaper. Yeah. And what we've done is looked at the numbers that you can order, their prices, divided them, so divided a couple of pennies on the yeah. end. So they're cheaper anyway, yeah. because they, she gets a discount, and then we're doing it that way. Which so is brilliant news, so it gives us a bit of money, and they're cheaper anyway, so thank you to Nicola and to sorting all that out for our work. Um, but the, the forms are at the back of church with an example of, of the flowers and the planting things that they've got, so please do that. Lastly, the magazine is returning, and it, the first edition will be in October. So if you usually have a column or you usually write something for the magazine, um, that's, you'll have to get it in, in September so it'll hit the October 
Um, it'd be lovely to get the magazines back as well, though, too, because I've, I've missed doing the crossword and the things like that in it as well. So uh, that's just to let you know, if you put anything in the magazine at all, please let them have them in September. Super. Thank you. We start for the police. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And we share one another a sign of that peace. Peace be with you. And the offer to him is 435. 435. <laughs> God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And we sit for the remainder of the Eucharist of prayer. Father in heaven, listen to the prayer we make in Jesus' name. Through the Holy Spirit's power, gentle as a dove. May this bread and this wine be for us Jesus' body and blood. Father, we remember when Jesus had supper with his friends the night before he died. He took the bread, he thanked you, broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine. He thanked you, gave it to his friends and said, All of you drink from this cup, because this is my blood. The new promise of God's love. Do this every time you drink it to remember me. Together we remember that Jesus is always with us and say, Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. And so as our Saviour taught us, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So come, let us receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Communion. It is in number 673. 
chapter number 673. of Jesus and his disciples, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. 